Hi Sagittarius, welcome to a new era. My name is Emma. Uh, Sagittarius, we will just jump right in. Uh, this is a love reading for the upcoming two weeks. So we're starting today on the 14th of November, going into the 26th of November, which means we're moving into your season. So we're moving from Scorpio into Sagittarius season. I believe it shifts somewhere in, depending on where you look, but somewhere on the, on the 22nd of the 11th, which is lovely numbers. I love them. It's two master numbers, 22 and 11. Um, and that will just shift things for you. That will, first of all, move you up from the explosive thunder and lightning uh, Scorpio. What, you know, it can be like you met somebody during Scorpio season only two days later to find out that, no, that's not for you. And then maybe feels like an instant connection and then it turns out it wasn't. Um, very thunder and lightning. If you move into Sagittarius, and I'm not describing you as a person, you might recognize yourself as a person. And of course, and of course, um, sorry, I'm just going to reshuffle that. It's taken from uh, what this what the Sagittarius stands for, but um, some will some will relate more and some will relate less. But Sagittarius is all about solid, uh, secure, longevity, like thinking long term, um, being really real. It's like the real authentic thing. Um, trustworthy energy. Yeah, just the, the main theme is just authentic long term rather than what was this what was this energy for two days? Like uh, something like that. So you will feel, and being Sagittarius, moving into Sagittarius season, oh, it's going to be just beautiful for you guys. Hmm. Okay. Well, it is Scorpio season, but I just had both for the YouTube reading and the extended I had the, the, this card. So if you feel attracted to Scorpio somehow, if you feel, um, if Scorpio, hasn't Scorpio come up for you before? It feels like I've said before, maybe you want to look into the Scorpio reading as well. I don't know if it resonates with you. If you feel like it, like now you're too curious to look, you don't really have to. If you feel drawn to it, if, if it speaks to you, you will know if it speaks to you. If it doesn't, leave it. I'm just saying the same card came out here and it's about profound things. So uh, you might want to have a look at it. Feel, feel, if, feel if it resonates. And then we have the owl card. Love it. I'll go into more depth about what I'm doing here. And then competition. So let's see what is, this is about. Um, so this is a love reading for the upcoming two weeks for you, Sagittarius. I just want to feel into it for a bit. Yeah, it gives me an immediate story almost. And it's beautiful that it feels like it transcends over time, which moves us. It doesn't necessarily have to be that we have to move out from Scorpio and into Sagittarius before um, before something really good can happen for you relationship wise of course not you can meet somebody tomorrow or you can be right now in a committed relationship and everything can just be heavenly we don't have to necessarily go into sagittarius in order to find that but i feel like it's going to be so much easier it won't be so in your face anymore but what the story here tells me is that you you've recently have been through some confrontations literally have been through some confrontations and so it this car doesn't have the same meaning in this reading as it did in scorpio um it's still the same card um it feels like relationship wise i don't know if it's necessarily only it's a general reading so take whatever applies i don't feel like it's only and what is happening with my neck as I'm talking to you? 
there's something with my neck that I had none feeling of the second before I started your reading. And it's, I started to feel it it's the, the second I started to record. And then I was like, ah, oh, I'm just going to ignore it. But it keeps adding on. So I don't know, Sagittarius, if you have something that has bothered you about your neck leading up to your head and, and maybe, maybe possibly headache or more down towards your back, something about the neck and the back. I don't know what I'm aiming for here whatsoever. I'm just starting to feel it all of a sudden. And it loosens up as I'm talking about it. So it's not mine. That's funny. So, uh, yeah, it comes up around confrontation here. So, what is this? It feels almost like your recent past. It feels like nothing that you're dealing with either like today or tomorrow. It feels like it has already happened. And if you, if you listen to this in a week from when I posted it, it does, definitely has already happened. That's what it feels like. It's old energies coming back. And like I said, it can be relationship-wise. It can be not only for romantic partners, but let's stick to the romantic partners at first. It feels like, okay, it can be an ex. It can be several exes. It can be people that has been interested in you. You've been interested in them but nothing really happened around you uh, that whoever this is, however this pl played out, it feels like somebody has returned into your life or there's been exchange of some sort in your life and it has awoken things within you. It has brought things to the surface for you um, that has been confrontational that is not it hasn't brought things back like oh that was a beautiful memory that was awesome memories sorry i'm a bit annoyed with this <laughs> hair thing that stands out um yeah it's, it's more like you remember things and how it how it was that you wanted to move away from and something within you is getting triggered was triggered i should say not anymore it was triggered so I don't know if you were on your way back, maybe, maybe you weren't on your way back with an ex, but maybe like the, the thought crossed your mind, it just crossed your mind. Could this work again? And then something happened and it made you realize, oh man, what was I thinking? Um, or it's been parents, kids, friends, uh, just other relationships that has been a bit confrontational in just the recent past. Something during Scorpio season has been a bit like starting things in you. It doesn't have to be confrontational that they stepped into your room or your space and they were just in your face and talked to you. Uh, I was like, can I, <laughs> instead of just moving my hand, <laughs> um, they can have you can have started to think about them or they could they could have thought about you and you let their thoughts come into your space and and started things for you uh, like I said for, for for any relationship so it's like you cleaned out or cleaned up a, a lot like a whole floor of not just romantic partners but for all relationships, it feels like you've had an ick, an itch, uh, uh, something that was a bit off. And now we're past that. Now, now, whatever confrontational thing that was, it only made you realize what you rather want and what you really need to let go of. And maybe what you need to be softer and kinder in. And maybe what you need to ask others to be softer and kinder towards you. That's really important. That led you to take a step back, to really like put things in perspective and really ask yourself what it is that you truly, purely want. What is it that, how do you want to meet others? How do you want others to meet you? What do you want in a relationship? And this goes both for, I feel like it's not only for single Sagittarius S. Uh, if you're in a committed relationship right now, you've been with your partner for quite some time. I feel like this is the same question. It's like, what do you truly want out of this relationship that you're in? 
what what can you truly bring to the table what can you bring to this relationship and what can they bring to you is it it isn't an even match is it a balance in this relationship or is somebody overgiving is is somebody else overgiving to you so and, and again i want to say that sagittarius are you overgiving in other relationships and they're not overgiving not over are you overgiving in that they're not giving enough is that not a fair share here of whatever you're putting in investment-wise with your energy and what you're expecting to come back? Look at this because it is going to have a profound shift for you when it comes to a romantic partner. When you sort this out, when you sort this out, and I feel like you're, you're, you're doing it as we speak, you're figuring this thing out, you're looking into what you want, where you overspend yourself and your energy and your time, maybe even your money. Uh, once you've established like, okay, so it's going to be maybe easier for you to establish a balancing act between you and a friend that you don't know all that well, which means, okay, this might sound like it's I'm getting a bit sidetracked and what does this have to do with my lovely relationship? Everything. Okay, so bear with me. It can, it can, I feel like it can be almost like a business proposal comes in, has nothing to do with love, has nothing to do with you being in a relationship or not, or what you feel about this person, is whether this is a good business proposal, business opportunity or not. And it just looks like it is a business opportunity and nothing else. And so you're given this from the universe or you've attracted this yourself to sort of practice almost like, okay, let's not screw up my major uh, soulmate connection with my lovely significant other let's bring in things that i can practice this on so you can are you giving energy and time and money to this project that is not giving you what you need back or the founders of this thing or the whatever whatever it is it doesn't have to i'm just trying to it's a general reading, so I'm just trying to have you understand what you're practicing on that will be so yummy in terms of you understanding finally the balance in your romantic partnership, both for committed and single people. If you're feeling in a in a in a committed relationship right now that you're the only one giving, or if you're giving uh, your you know, uh, might not get, be overgiving, but you're giving, but it's an undergiving from the other person. Um, then something happens in your life that gets you to practice, okay? If I were to switch services with another person, I do this for you, you do this for me. Here comes a business proposal, okay? I put in my time and money in this business proposal, but what, but hey, before I sign anything, before I agree to do this, what is it going to do for me? What is it going to do for me? When you start to ask those questions or just being uh, just being a good person in the world, if you're, if you're helping people out or if you're just you know, sending things to all these organizations, they're everywhere. You can send money to poor people, to animals, to you know, Greenpeace, whatever, you know. If you're just sending and sending and sending money, are you as well receiving money from the universe in unexpected ways? Are you not through work, not through, because that's you putting in your time and energy, your time and energy, and then somebody, um, if you're working at a corporate place, you, you go there on Monday morning, you work your hours, you get your paycheck. Uh, that's you exchanging your time and money for for sorry, time and energy for you to get money back. So that's, that might be an equal change. Look, look there as well. Are you overspending over? Are you working late? Are you working late nights and you're not going to your boss saying, Hey, I'm giving too much of my time and energy here. You should get, you should pay me more actually. 
That's exactly what I'm talking about. When you get this down, when you demand from the universe and the people around you that the equal amount of time that I spend, time, energy, and money on something, whatever that is, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that whatever I put in here is going to come back here. Whatever I put in here might come back somewhere else. But are you allowing that in or are you saying no, thank you? Because come come this beautiful soulmate relationship or for you guys who are already in a committed relationship and you wonder why they don't see you, why don't why they don't give something back to you, are you allowing it in? And if you give your person money, maybe their idea of giving you something might not be money. Uh, they might get you a teddy bear and you're like, what the f- I gave you a thousand dollars and you give me a teddy bear. Are you kidding me? Um, (laughs) I don't know. Bad metaphor, but speak what you want. If you're a person who truly, truly, uh, you might, you might like to give teddy bear, teddy bears. You might like to give fluffy stuff, but you might like to allow, uh, receive, uh, money. Let your partner know. You might be a person that is like, you like services like you if your person uh if your person pours up a cup of coffee to themselves and they hand you a cup of coffee it almost uh it almost turns you on because it's it's like the the act of what is, what is it called the the kind act of service i don't know sorry um they're doing something nice for you that they were they could eat they could have not done it for you but because they care of you Um, they wanted to do that for you explain that to them that is the most that is the best thing to me this is getting way too specific um guys you need to look out for what you are over giving of yourself and undertaking you're not taking enough back you need to set those boundaries and wherever you haven't set it in your in the rest of your relationships what i don't care what relationship that is it's my old mother she's 85 she can't do anything else she can she can do something she can do something if you start to resent her it's because you don't get back from her what she needs to give to you in order for for you to continue to do to her or you're not allowing in from the universe what the universe tried to give you in other venues okay this is you taking a step back, realizing all of this. This is you taking different perspective, understanding this way more and, and really truly understanding that, wait, this thing has something to do with my relation, my personal, private, romantic relationships. I'm an overgiver. I give too much. I spend too much. And, and the too much wouldn't even be there if they did the same to you. So you need to start to allow that in. And that's what you've been confronted with. Maybe I can talk. Maybe people from the past that, you know, weren't equal in your energy. And you just got reminded of that again. And it's like, heck no, this time around in the relationship that I'm in, I'm going to go home and I'm going to talk to my partner because this, it has to be equal pay, (laughs) equal pay, Sagittarius. For you single guys, you've taken a step back and you realize this is this is something you need to watch out for in your next relationship. You shouldn't even have to watch out for it. It should already be taken care of. That's why you attract these things right now where you can practice. Um, sure, I'll do that for you. What are you going to do for me? Ask it up front. And it doesn't have to be snarky or harsh or anything just wow what a beautiful idea you do that for me what um sorry i do that for you what how can what can you do for me so so it just gets equal it feels good uh or or did you take did you intend to pay or like just really honest with your energy okay guys last card out is you're getting your power back you're getting your power back and you're getting your power back. This is you being a powerhouse, a really playful, fun. This is the Sagittarius we know. Um, a fun, fun loving, uh, just having a great time, being feeling really powerful. And I feel like this is towards the end of the two upcoming weeks. And this 
so this means that we probably have like almost um, moved into um, your Sagittarius season. Okay, guys. Uh, I don't even know if I said that there was going to be an extended. Um, and if you resonated with this message, you will resonate with the extended as well. For a lot of signs this time around, um, I, I won't lie, the extended is what brings uh, some bacon into my life. Uh, but I can't do them just cause because it's uh, that talking about giving and receiving, that's funny. Um, that, that would be such a thing. I would put the extended out in the wrong energy. I would put the extended out so that I could get money back. I wouldn't, get, I wouldn't do the extended um, to help you, to have value in it. Because if it's not value in it, it won't help you and you wouldn't, you wouldn't invest anyway. So having that said, I want to say I'm not going to do extended today because it feels like you are so figuring things out for yourself rather than important where your person's at in relationship to you, if that makes sense. That feels like the next time around for the love reading. That's what I feel like right this moment anyway. So I hope this helps it uplift you guys. I feel like you. this is the key to really what you want. And this is the key to understanding how you truly, truly, truly can have like a really awesome, balanced... Um, Just a lovely soulmate connection with somebody that equal equally wants to give to you what you want to give to them. And it won't even have to be a fight about it because you sorted it out before going in. Being in a committed relationship, talk to your partner, start to give what feels of value to your partner, but equally require that back from them. Okay, guys, I hope it helps. I hope it uplifts you. And please subscribe on your way out if you haven't already. It really would help me a lot. I have uh, surpassed 700 though. Yay. Take care, guys. Bye.